Hi, in this video I'd like to show you a little bit more about how to use Excel. Specifically, I want to talk about how to set up your spreadsheet in a way to better emphasize the information that you want to emphasize and to provide information in a more meaningful way so that other people can understand what you're trying to do. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to review a little bit the difference between numbers and labels. The two of them are, are calculated or managed by Excel in very different ways and it's important to understand the difference between them. The second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use number formats. Things like place in the decimal point in the right place and commas and so on. Also, date formats. I'm going to go over how to use different fonts and also colors. This will be followed by a little bit about how to set a column width and how to set the height of your rows. So no further ado, let's talk about numbers versus labels. Excel can treat us an individual cell in one of two ways, as either a number or as a label. A number could be either typing in a number, like here I'll type in 100, or it could be typing in a formula that includes some kind of numbers. So for example, if I were to write 1 plus 1 plus 1, Excel would treat the sum as a number. This could also, by the way, include a formula. The other thing that Excel can accept in an individual cell is something called a label. A label is when this content of the cell includes some kind of word. It's really anything with alphabetics in it. So for example, if I write my name here, or I write the name of the President of the United States, Excel will treat that as a label. Now if you spell out a number, Excel will treat it as a label. If you, set, if you start the label with a number, Excel will also treat it as a label and not as a number. This difference is extremely important because if you enter a label, then the formatting is going to be a little bit different from a number. And labels are generally left justified. So you can see they're all left justified, whereas numbers are usually right justified unless you change them. So how do we format numbers? Here again, I have my sample spreadsheet. And to format a number, all you have to do is highlight the cells that you're interested in. And you can either right-click them to get a short menu. Here's a few things that you can do with numbers right here. Or go to your menu bar at top. By hitting Home, and I'm going to pin this menu bar down so that, you can, so that it stays down and you can keep on looking at it and admiring it. So I've highlighted these cells and I'd like to change them. Let's suppose that I don't want to provide five digits behind the decimal point. I only want to provide two. So I'll go to this icon here, which decreases the decimals, and click it three times. And now we'll present the whole number here, and then the decimals down to hundredths. Let's suppose that I want to add a decimal here. I can click this cell, and it will add one more decimal digit to the number. Some other things you can do in number formats are things like commas. So for example, let's suppose I want to present the cost information, not as 10841.49, but I'd like to present this with a comma. Therefore, I can simply click the comma here, and it will provide commas at the thousands and millions and so on. Now another thing that the comma icon does for you is it rounds your decimals to the nearest hundredths. So for example, if I were to comma these hours, watch here, I have four decimals, it will cut it down to just two decimals. And you can always change this, increase the decimals like so. One important thing to be able to do is to add dollar signs, or if you're in another country, to add pounds or euros. So, highlight the cells and hit the dollar sign icon. And now your information will be presented 
with the dollar sign indicating that it is in dollars. There are many other number functions that are available. To get them, you can either right click on the cells and select format cells. And here you can see different categories and all sorts of different options. Alternatively, click right here and you'll get the same menu. Dates in Excel are somewhat unique. I'm going to insert a column here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the top of the column, right click it and select insert. And you can simply write a date and Excel will format it for you automatically. I'm going to type in the date right now and hit enter. And Excel formats this into a standard format putting the number, the date first, the date number first, the month, and then the year. Now if you would like to change this, you can either right click it and select format cells, or you can click the little arrow here and select date under category. And here are many different options for formatting your date. So if I want to spell out the month, I would click here, hit OK, and now it's formatted the way I want. If I want to go crazy, format cells, this happens to be my favorite, and there you even have the day of the month, the day of the week. For fonts, Excel offers you all of the fonts that might Microsoft Office has at its disposal. So for example, let's say I want to change these fonts. Simply click here and select which font you'd like to use. I like Century Schoolbook. You also have options for boldface, italic. Now, I have underline here. Not everybody has it. To get underline, you can click here and you'll see there's an underline menu. Single. And here's more detail on different things that you can do. Bold, italic, different font sizes, even strike through. For colors, you can change the color of the background of the cell, also change the color of the type inside the cell. So for example, Let's suppose that I want to make the backgrounds here a different color. I can click on the bucket or the little arrow right next to the bucket over here and then select my background color. I'm going to select, let's see here, dark blue. Then I'm, you can also change the color of the letters themselves. Click on the A. And instead of just clicking on it, click on the little arrow next to it right there, and it'll bring down a full menu. Select the color you would like to use, and Excel will do all the rest. The next thing I like to talk about is column width. Sometimes the columns are not quite the width that you want. For example, look at this column. It's way too wide. So what I can do here is I can go to the top part of this column, which indicates what column letter it is and click on the edge, the right edge of it, and drag it to the size that I'm looking for. I can drag it left, I can drag it right, whatever size I want. If you like Excel to auto size it for you, then double click on that edge, like so, and Excel will set the size for you, just big enough to include your content, not any bigger. For row heights, it's going to be much the same. So for example, if I want to make this row deeper, I simply, row 6, I simply click at the bottom and then drag it to the desired depth. And you can also auto size rows by double clicking at the bottom of the row here at the left. So there you have it. Today we talked about numbers versus labels number formats, date formats, fonts, different colors for backgrounds and for the text, column width and row heights. 
Thank you for watching this video. If you got something out of it, please click like. Feel free to leave a comment at the bottom and look for video number five in my series on how to use Excel. Thank you.